The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Righteousness has everything to do with your successful life of prayer. When you pray righteously, you pray with confidence that whatever you pray, God is going to hear you. When you pray something and you're waiting on the manifestation of the answer, once you pray it is when the fight begins. Notice the devil starts with your thoughts. So if you thought wrong, put your hand over your mouth because if you come out with something that negates that prayer, then you're going to have to start over again. So we have to watch what we say because angels are on assignment and waiting on God's words that you speak. How do you know that you have the petition you desired of him? Because he heard you. How do you know he heard you? Because you prayed according to his will. So when God suggests the impossible to you, be it unto me. Don't try to figure it out how he's going to do it. How is this going to work through me? Only believe. As we deal with prayer, we're going to also have to deal with faith. Because prayer does not make faith work. Faith makes prayer work. And so as we found that out, we have to see that when dealing with faith, you're dealing with the invisible. In other words, what controls what you can see is what you can't see. You recall how Jesus cursed a fig tree. And you recall that it said it dried up from the roots, okay? But notice what happened if the roots are gone, what happens to the tree? It dies. So if the root of anything, the, the, the root of strife, the root of sickness or cancer, the root and the church deals with the root. Got it? That's, we, we've been so designed that we can go to the root of something and get it done away with. You know the roots, what you can't see is controlling what you can see. Say amen to that. Amen. Uh, you yourself, you're sitting here and so forth. Somebody, if the spirit, their spirit left their body, what will happen to their body? It'll die, fall to the ground. If it's outside on the grass or something and nobody picks it up, it'll just decay. And if it decay, it'll go back to the dust of which it came from. Now watch this. Notice, the spirit is still alive, but the flesh isn't. It's gone. So what was keeping the flesh in place of what you can see was something you couldn't see. See, so every problem has a root. Every situation has a root. If you got money problems, you got a root. If you ever attack that root, you can fix that money problem, right? right Say amen to that. And see, what people don't do, they don't go to the root. Because here is a church, and it's a line between the, the seen and the unseen. It's a line. It's a, it's a level there. And you got to cross that line. But when you cross that line, you can't cross it except by faith. But once you cross it by faith, you can't feel anything else. See, that's why I told you words originally weren't predominantly made to communicate with. They were made to create with. And once you cross that line, you know, you, that's what makes you like God. You can, cross, you can flow in both realms. See, what you see is just the tip of the iceberg of what exists. There's a full spectrum of reality. That's what you can see and what you can't see. And the world can't do anything but what they can see. Now the enemy, you know, try to show them things and so forth. But the devil operates from the unseen realm. Now, it says here that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness, and so forth. So, we're not going to deal with him on the level of the leaves. We're going to deal with him from the level of the what? Of the root. Same thing about Jesus stopping the storm. When he stopped the storm, he said, peace be what? Still. And the Bible said there was a great calm. But it says he spoke to the wind first. He spoke to the unseen first. You can't see wind. Can you see wind? No. You see the results of wind. 
wind symbolizing the spirit. So he spoke to the spirit of a thing first and the waves stopped. I said the waves stopped. Amen. So when I preach the gospel and teach the word of God, I'm speaking to your spirit. I'm, I'm trying to get you true enough. Your mind can get an appreciation, get renewed. But I'm speaking mainly trying to get this in your spirit because the church is a big resurrection center. If I can put it in your spirit, it'll come alive inside of you and control your life. Say amen to that. As we look at this, we are doing this to get people into this place where people can kind of see what's going on in their life and not be victims all the time, but now be victorious. And uh, uh, Jesus, as you know, he went over to the madman of Gadara in Mark chapter five, and he cast the spirit out of him. Once he cast the spirit out of him, the Bible said we saw the man sitting at the feet of Jesus closed and in his right mind. So it's amazing how people act up when there's a spirit, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, causing them to act like they uh, are acting. Now, second Timothy chapter one, verse seven, the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. So what I said last time to you, I said, Hey, when you're dealing with faith, you got to get rid of fear because they can't both coexist the same place. So you got to get rid of fear. And every time Jesus showed up, he says, fear not. And you got to get rid of fear. Fear might be anything. It might be fear, fear, of whatever, going and going, getting old, getting in front of people, fear of what they might think of me, fear of how my hair looks, fear of so forth. But these are fears. And the Bible says over in Psalm chapter 34 and verse four, he said, he sought the Lord and the Lord delivered him from all of his fears. Job said, the thing that I feared most, come on, help me, has come upon me. And so you're not to fear anything. You, I said, you're not to fear anything. Fear is designed to negate your faith. Why negate your faith? Because your prayer won't work. Prayer won't work without faith. Pray, pray, prayer doesn't make faith work. Faith makes prayer work. So you need faith for your prayer to work. Fear comes in to negate it. So the enemy will put something in front of you, try to give you sudden fear, try to make you panic, try to make you have a panic attack, try to so forth and so on. Anything to keep you from getting your inheritance. Say amen to that. So from now on, no fear. Say no fear. No fear. All right. Now, the next thing was righteousness. All right. That righteousness. The Bible says in, in, in uh, James chapter five, that the effective fervent prayer of the who? Of the righteous availeth much. Now, this is kind of interesting here, the righteous. The Bible says over in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse one, that the righteous are as bold as a lion. Say amen to that. Amen. What does righteous mean, basically? It means that you are in right standing with God. When Adam and Eve uh, ate of the forbidden fruit in the garden, then Adam fell. And he fell to this place where he ran from God. He was not in right standing with God. And uh, as, as this happened, um, Adam now no longer knew God and could no longer operate as God called him to operate. In other words, um, his life became controlled by his soul instead of his spirit. And God wants you to walk in the spirit, wants you to be controlled by the spirit. Put that verse up there. It's in Proverbs chapter 20 and 27. Proverbs 20 and 27. Here's what he says in it. He said this, the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord searching the inward parts, all the inward parts of the belly. What does he mean? He means that God is going to use your spirit to guide you. So you were meant to be under spirit control, not under your soul. Well, I'm a soul man. Now you weren't meant, you're meant to be under your spirit. Say amen to that. When you get born again, it's your spirit that gets born again. Your mind has to be renewed to that new person that's inside of there. Are you with me here? So when Adam fell, he fell to the level of his soul. So everything he did was intellectual. That was the center of his universe. And you get people today who've got all kinds of advanced degrees and everything. And they think that's the end of it. No, 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 my friend. All of that without the light of the gospel is dark knowledge. 
all of it is dark knowledge because it can never get you out, completely out of anything. It's not designed for it. It can't take you there. You can't go into the ultimate wisdom of God with the mind of a man. You have to have help to get there. Say amen to that. And so some people think just because they get a lot of education and so forth, they don't need God anymore. That's because your mind has taken over. But here's the difference. Satan can easily defeat the mind. As a matter of fact, what he does with people is he raises them up and uses them and they think it's their own thinking. See, you and I were never designed to live sovereign. In other words, we were all designed for an overlord. So either we're going to worship God or we're going to worship something else. So we are designed for that. Now, what I'm saying, and I'm not talking against education, I'm saying education without God is really undereducated. You've got to put God in the picture. He's got to come back in the picture because the, the all truth is in Jesus. Yeah, okay. All right. So I just want to let you know, I'm not coming against anybody. I'm just saying you got halfway there. Now, now let's get to the other side because you can't find God through the intellect. You can't, dis, you can't get born again in your own mind. You got to release it and get to born again from the heart, from the spirit. Okay, praise God. All right, now, so that, let's deal with this just a few minutes because we're talking about righteousness because it's very important. Now, it's very important for you to get an education, so don't, I'm not putting that down at all. I'm just saying that you, you got to keep going and, and get all of it. A person who started Harvard was a minister. A person who started uh, Princeton was a minister. I mean, because they understood the, the knowledge of the scriptures and so forth, but somehow... The enemy has caused people to move that out for the most part. And I'm not talking against the universities now. I'm just saying that most of it is cerebral now. But we got to come back to God. We've got to put him first because the spirit has to lead the way, then the mind. All right. Now, let's do with this thing righteousness again. Um, I was looking at a Western. And, uh, you know, I look at Westerns every now and then. And, uh, you know, those old ones, you know, not... Not, you know, old school. Y'all don't know nothing about that. It's old school. And, uh, and this was starting, starring Glenn Ford. And um, I used to like him because he, he was a good guy. You know what I mean? Uh, just, okay. So anyway, um, I, I like John Wayne, but he walks sideways too much. <laughs> Uh, sideways. Okay. But anyway, so, so anyway, he was, he was down, if, he, he was a marshal of the city, the town, and he was out fishing and getting some fish and so forth, called fish. And then uh, a stranger came riding a horse and uh, a stranger asked, Hey, which way to town and so forth? He said, what's well, that way? And go to the fork of the road and go left and so forth. He said, but stranger, you willing to? partake of some fish with me? Well, I've got more than enough here. He said, well, I think I will. So what did he do? He got down with him. They cooked the fish and eating and chatting and so forth. And he said, well, why are you going to the town? And he said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the marshal. <laughs> well, Glenn Ford being the cool Glenn Ford that he is, he didn't react, you know. He said, well, why do you want to kill the marshal? He said, because uh, he's, I heard he's the fastest gun around here. He said, well, you, you want to kill him just because he's the fastest gun? He said, yeah. He said, now, what is that going to get you? I mean, here's a man, you know, and you want to kill him and so forth. So then as he went on with the conversation, pretty soon he revealed to the guy, I'm the marshal. And the guy said, well, I'm going to have to leave because I don't feel right eating your food and I'm going to have to kill you. <laughs> And, uh, and so, and so Glenn Ford being the cool Glenn Ford that he is, he said, oh, okay. All right. Well, I, I hate you have to kill me, you know, and so forth or want to kill me. So the guy left. So between the time they met and he said, he's going to kill him. And the time they actually had the gunfight, a lot of things transpired. One, Glenn Ford 
a snake was about to bite him and the guy shot the snake. And then one time the guy was in trouble, Glenn Ford helped him. So some things went down. So Glenn Ford comes back and he says, uh, do you still want to kill me? Yep. I said, well, I, I, you're a young guy. He said, I was like you when I was young. I was just hot-headed and so forth and so on. You don't, you don't need to do this. Guy said, no, I got to do it. And he said, let me tell you something. He said, now, <clears throat> you, got, you have too much conscience to be a gunslinger. One day your guilt is going to get you killed. I want you to focus in on that just a minute. See, when you go up against the devil, if you got guilt, you better back off and get your guilt thing together. Because guilt strips you of your faith. Faith is what you need for the ability of God to come in and give you your super on your natural. Yes, sir. Say amen to that. Amen. And what people try to do sometimes is try to go into places with sin consciousness. Places that they're going to get them to find themselves not being successful. They're going to fail. They're going to so forth, so forth. And it's not God's fault. It's just that they never received the forgiveness and the cleansing that God has given them through the word of God. Amen. Say amen to this. Amen. Now, I'm, I, I want to use this because this thing really registered in me when I saw this. Because how many people, many trying to get, they're trying to get healed or trying to get so forth. And it may be you're going up against a gunslinger. And, and there might be some guilt there about how this happened to me and so forth. You got to get rid of all of that. All right. You got to read this Bible and hit, let him tell you that your sins and your iniquities, he will remember no more. Amen. You, you got to understand that there is therefore now, Romans chapter 8, verse, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I know your flesh did what it did, but one of the reasons why it did what it did it's because you, you aren't able to defeat the one who is causing you to do it. Amen. All right. Amen. We didn't, we, come on now. We, right. we didn't have what the knowledge that it took to be able to override the temptations of the devil. Amen. And the next thing you know, we end up in a situation here that we wish we never had ended up with. But I think God gets great honor out of people who could forget those things that are behind and reach forward to those things. I think he gets great honor out of that. The reason why is because he himself said, your sins and your iniquity, I will remember no more. If God says, I will remember it no more, why are we remembering it? I think for us to bring it up to God is to dishonor his word. He said it. And I think when he can find somebody that will act on that by faith as if they never sinned a day in their life, it honors him. He'll say, look at my child. Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Yep. What did he do? He got in a gunfight with Glenn Ford. What do you think happened to him? Shot dead. Here's what Glenn said. I hated to do that. <laughs> he told him, he told him, your guilt is going to get you killed. Amen. Yes, sir. You better get rid of that guilt. Because when you got something that attacks your body called a disease, you don't want any guilt. You want it all faith. You want to say amen to that. Amen. And if you have something that you have not confessed before the Lord, 
then if you confess your sin, put it up there, 1 John 1, 9. Now, let me tell you who don't want me to talk about this. The devil and those who the devil is in. They do not want me to tell you this because this is a way Paul had to get free so that he could write over half the New Testament. Because he was hauling people off the jail who were innocent and committing to their death. But look what God did with a man that, that received Jesus. And all that was old went away and the new road opened up for him. Here's what he says. If we confess, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to what? Forgive us our sin and to do what now? Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now here's the deal about that. Don't wait on a feeling. Well, I don't quite feel forgiven. What does that feel like? What you need to do is take your forgiveness by faith and act like you never did it. Lord. Sometimes you might go off and you might say, I'm going I'm I'm to be very Christ-like today. And you <laughs> ended up going off on somebody. Now the enemy going to try to torment you with that. And so, and when you went off, went off, boom, uh, Father, forgive me, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Then get up and say, all right, I'm here again. Praise God. We, we going at it. We, we ain't through yet. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? Remember, the enemy don't want me to tell you this. Because this is what he's been stacking up some of his defense on. Right here. And it's been big in these modern times because there's so much, so much area of temptation out here today. And you down there on the farm down there back in 1820, you ain't got much to tempt and tip. You, 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 you know, you, you just, you didn't plow today. I mean, that, are you following what I'm saying? Oh, boy, I'm telling you. Look at the guy who's been incarcerated or something like that for some drugs, something like that, and come out. And boy, God, you take great pleasure when you got saved and you, you forget what you did behind and start acting like, come on, like a like son of God and talking like a son of God, like you never missed it. Hey, that's good news, folks. Righteousness has everything to do with your successful life of prayer. When you pray righteously, you pray with confidence that whatever you pray, God is going to hear you. When you pray something and you're waiting on the manifestation of the answer, once you pray it is when the fight begins. Notice the devil starts with your thoughts. So if you thought wrong, put your hand over your mouth because if you come out with something that negates that prayer, then you're going to have to start over again. So we have to watch what we say because angels are on assignment and waiting on God's words that you speak. How do you know that you have the petition you desire of him? Because he heard you. How do you know he heard you? Because you prayed according to his will. So when God suggests the impossible to you, be it unto me. Don't try to figure it out how he's going to do it. How is this going to work through me? Only believe. I trust that you've been blessed by the day's message. I'd like to take a moment to share a couple of testimonies with you that They've come from our prayer call center. We have a call center that's set up to pray with people who would call in. Now, we created this center for you, the partners, the viewers, those who would call in and need prayer for any matter. It doesn't make any difference. We want to pray with you, stand and agree with you, whatever we need to believe God for you, for the things that you need God to do in your life. Now, here is a testimony that was given to me. This came in from Florida. This particular person had a family member that was in a coma. They'd been in a coma for two weeks and that this family member was, the family was being challenged as to whether to take the person off of life support or just leave them on. Well, this one person decided to call the prayer center here at Bill Winston Ministries and that prayer minister prayed with them and believed God for that person's deliverance or that person to come out of that coma. 
Well, shortly after the family called this person and reported that the sister, the dear sister that was in a coma opened her eyes and woke up and then asked for a drink of water. Now, they ask what time that this sister called the prayer center. What time did they pray for this dear sister in the hospital? They prayed at 1116 a.m. in the morning. And that is the exact time the sister woke up from a coma that she had been in for two weeks. Praise God. Let me give you another one. This tech of testimony comes from Illinois. This particular person called for prayer uh, for their godmother. Now, she had stage four cancer and was going to have surgery. Now, after they had received, received prayer from the prayer call center, the doctor started the surgery but could not any longer find cancer in this person's body. Now, these are actual testimonies that have been coming in. So I'm just saying here that if you need prayer, if you need somebody to agree with you, we've got people that know how to get hold of God. I'm telling you, see, God's plan is that we all be healed. God's plan that we all be delivered. God's plan that we all have enough abundance or whatever have you. So if you're going through something that isn't God's plan, in other words, there's something in your situation there that you know is not God's will for your life. Call that prayer center. They're standing by. These folk know how to pray. And as you pray with them and they agree with you, we're going to believe God that every need of your life is going to be met. Well, remember, we're here for you. The prayer call center is available. We love you. And this is Bill Winston saying, keep walking by faith. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers, for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. And viewers. And viewers. And viewers. Em như 